I don't want to hear any more excuses about not having enough space for a proper server rack. This is my mini lab complete with a full ITX board, three terabytes of SSD storage, a GPU for gaming, four Raspberry Pi 5s, a switch, patch panel, two screens, a dock, and its own temperature sensor. With only one plug, we have this entire rack up and running and ready for your home lab goodies and treats. And with it only taking up the size of a Turbo Nerds desktop system, you have no reason not to build one of these things. Let's take a look at what I have here. The core of this build is the 10 inch 8U Rackmate T1 from DeskPy. I never really thought of doing a 10 inch build even after they asked if I wanted to try it out. Then I saw Jeff Geerling do a video about it and um, I was very inspired after that. But really, it was super fun to kit this thing out. Like I mentioned, it can accommodate 8U worth of 10 inch gear, which is a strange size for some folks. I'm used to 19 inch and four inches. The build quality here is pretty nice with the frame being an aluminum alloy and the sides being a dark acrylic. For $180, you get this whole setup with two Raspberry Pi IO daughter boards. Oh, and it's got these cool handles for when home labbing gets hell intense and you need something to grab onto. All the accessories I have here can be purchased as well, like 1U panels, dual Raspberry Pi mounts, ventilated shelves, mini ITX mount, and a patch panel. All in, you're probably gonna spend around $250 for a decent setup or around 300 if you want what you see here, without all the actual hardware, of course. All right, well, that's the rack, but what good is a rack without hardware to go in it? And boy, do I have some hardware in here. Let's start at the top and work our way down. At the very tippy top, I have this 10 inch screen that is made for mounting a Raspberry Pi on the back. It was sitting in my attic for a long time and I finally found a use case for it. There are tons of these out there, usually for around $50. I'll link this exact one down below if I can find it. You'll also see another screen up here. And while yes, it has a screen, this is actually a USB dock with all kinds of different inputs. This is the Vobot Mini Dock, which is an Indiegogo campaign right now. And I know, I know, crowdsource, blech. But if you're about that life, this is a cool product. Like I mentioned, it's a regular old USB dock with these imports that I'm showing you on the screen right now. But y'all don't really care about that. The front here actually has two separate screens with the left being used to display time and the right being a two inch 320 by 240 screen that can be used for all kinds of things like weather, PC hardware info, calendar, to-do list, screen mirroring, and even retro gaming. Now I've tested a few of these out and they mostly work fairly well, but the retro gaming is a beta feature right now and I couldn't get it to work, but everything else worked great. I just leave it on weather because I like to be reminded why I don't go outside during the summer in Texas. Oh, and the Indiegogo price right now is $58, which I think is well worth it. So I did say two screens, and I'm not counting this one as a real screen, but this is. I showed this off in one of my AliExpress videos, and what it is is an 8 inch 1920 by 480 widescreen IPS display. You can use it for whatever you want because at the end of the day, it's just an HDMI connected display, but the main use is for hardware monitoring with IDA64. I found a template that I liked and the appropriate resolution and imported it. I really don't want to complain too much, but IDA64 really needs a better medium for user submitted templates than a single forum post with like a zillion pages, especially since it's a paid software. Come on. Now I know it looks like I kind of have it suspended on the side defying gravity, but I don't. Clearly I have some sophisticated 3D printed bracket to hold it on there. Um, no, I'm just using sticky putty. This brings up somewhat of a complaint I have with the rack. There are lots of mounting holes on the front and back, obviously, but I do wish there were a few on the sides for custom mounting stuff, but it's more of a wishful feature. And the last thing up here is the button I use to turn on one of the PCs that you'll see in a bit. Moving on, we have our first piece of actual hardware in a network switch. Now this is nothing fancy. It's just a regular old Netgear 8 port one gig switch. I initially had the idea of using my Asus gear in here to give me a full router switch access point setup, but I decided against that because, well, it was just too much and this looks better. I have a feed coming in from my unified network and gave this rack its own VLAN, so this whole setup operates independently of the rest of my network. Switch feeds into this little patch panel, which is very unnecessary for this setup, but for being completely honest, this whole thing is a bit unnecessary. Checkmate. Okay, boys, now we're getting to the juicy stuff. The next thing we have here is a full-fledged PC. Yeah, we have a mini ITX board with an Intel i7-13700K, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 128 gigabyte NVMe drive running Proxmox. 
As you can see, the RAM is RGB, which makes it 10% faster. Don't look that up. This is certainly enough horsepower to run an entire home lab worth of services, but I'm only running two VMs at the moment, a TrueNAS VM and a Windows VM. TrueNAS? Wait, what are you serving up a 128 gig NVMe drive like a little bitch? No, I actually have three one terabyte SSDs. Checkmate again, two nothing Brett. I went with this exact configuration for a very specific reason, and that was because that's what I had in my storage drawer. And also, I didn't want a bunch of noisy hard drives killing the vibe. So wait, I also have a Windows VM. What's the deal with that? Is it because I want to work on some spreadsheets? Absolutely not. Well, sometimes. But this is for gaming. That's right. Oh, you're going to game on integrated graphics? How cute. Nope, I got a whole ass GTX 1050 Ti mounted to the back using a PCI riser and some strategically placed zip ties. Then I just passed it through in Proxmox and yeah, it's kind of it. Works pretty well. Obviously you can use the monitor up here to play your games, but the better use case here is to install Parsec and use this as a little cloud gaming rig. I did a video on Parsec a long time ago and while they've improved and added features since then, the setup is pretty much the same. I can then use Parsec to play games locally over my LAN or even connect outside of my network. And you're probably wondering, Brett, why would you go with something like an old 1050 Ti? Come on guys, say it with me. It's cause it's what I had in my drawer. Good job. More realistically, I just wanted something small and that didn't require external power and this fit the bill. Now I could certainly get way more out of this setup, but this video wasn't really about pushing all the hardware to the limit and more just to see what kind of cool stuff I can shove into this rack. Okay, moving on, we have our Raspberry Pis and we all know what a huge fan of SBCs I am, right guys? Yeah, I know what I said, but there are use cases where SBCs are great and cramming a bunch into a mini rack to form a K3S cluster is definitely one of them. I have four Raspberry Pi 5s in here and I chose Pi 5s since I actually never tried them out, so why not just get four of them? The setup I have is three of them are in a K3S cluster and the fourth one is an Ansible slash Docker node. Yep, that's right, Ansible. I've never really gotten into Ansible because I'm lazy and don't often build or rebuild lots of stuff in my rack, but I really want an excuse to get into it. I use this guide from a guy you may know called Techno Tim. I think he has a YouTube channel or something. Just kidding, Tim's the best. And you know what? I'm challenging him to a mini rack duel. You see what I'm working with here? Let's see what you've got. Hey Brett, appreciate the offer. I'm like really busy right now. You know, I'm not sure if, uh, if I'm gonna be able to get some hardware in time, um, but I think I could do it. Uh, I don't have a lot of ideas. I don't know. I guess I'll just figure it out with some things I have laying around here. So yeah, I'm stealing his code and then challenging him to a duel. Clearly, I have no shame. After deploying a K3S cluster using Ansible, I don't think I'll ever go back to manual deployment. All I had to do was change a few attributes and run the deployment command. After a few minutes, my cluster was set up and running with a built-in load balancer. Usually I go ahead and spin up Rancher, but this time I wanted to try out two other popular Kubernetes UIs, Lens and Portainer. Wait, Portainer? Like the Docker Portainer? Yeah, they let you hook into a Kubernetes cluster after installing their agent. I wouldn't say it's the best Kubernetes UI as there doesn't seem to be a good way to really easily access your pods, which is pretty important. It's good for just poking around and seeing what your cluster is up to, but I'll probably stick to using it for my Docker instances. Lens though, I love Lens. It's a super clean UI that easily lets you browse through your cluster and deploy objects. Sure, Rancher gives you a bit more with their apps and whatnot, but I'm probably just gonna stick with Lens for now. Well, that's three of my pies. What about the fourth? Well, like I said, it's an Ansible and Docker boy. I always like having a Docker instance stood up besides my K3S cluster for when I inevitably run into something that's too difficult to deploy in K3S. I've been debating about blowing up the K3S cluster and trying out Docker Swarm since I've never used it before and I guess we'll see what happens. Another thing this Pi runs is my temperature monitor, which is the axe effect from some other up and coming YouTuber named Jeff from Craft Computing. This is a cool little device that runs off of a Raspberry Pi Pico and transmits temperature data over SNMP. I even got it feeding into my home assistant instance. It's in beta right now. And at the time of making this video, I think there's only a few more available for purchase, but go follow Jeff for updates on when the production ready version will be ready for sale. 
Now it would have been way cooler to have all of these pies PoE powered and to use a PoE switch, but at the time of making this video, I think there's only one PoE hat for the Raspberry Pi 5, and the way it's mounted, it just wouldn't work with this setup. The next spot isn't too exciting as it's just a shelf that holds an HDMI splitter and a keyboard. The HDMI splitter lets me choose between displaying an image from the actual Proxmox host or my gaming PC. And the keyboard is a cool little foldable setup that also has a little trackpad. I also picked this one up because it has a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, which is easier to pass through to my Windows VM. Well, we finally hit the bottom of the rack where all the power is. I guess you can call this a power bottom. Google it if you want to learn more about what power bottoms in your home server are for. Here I have two things, a power distribution box that gives me a few 120 volt AC plugs and five USB ports. It was actually harder than I thought to find one that would supply enough power to each USB port to power all four Pis and my display. I spent about $60 on this one and of course everything in the rack will be listed down in the description below. So yeah, all the USB ports are being used for USB things and one of the plugs is being used for my SFF power supply that powers the ITX PC and my SATA drives. The cool thing here is that all I have to do is plug in a single power cable and the entire rack has power. Speaking of power, how much does this setup actually use? Well, with everything running, it sits at around 100 watts. And if I'm doing something wild and crazy like gaming, it'll go up higher, but that's expected. And 100 watts isn't terrible for this much stuff going on, if I'm being completely honest. I could certainly get that number down, but the goal of this wasn't to build the most power efficient setup. It was about building the coolest one. Now around the back, there isn't anything else besides the axe effect and the GPU and uh, some very subpar cable management. Overall, I think this came out way better than I thought it would. It's definitely not perfect though. The cable management could be way better. I could probably finally use this to learn some basic 3D design and print some actual brackets instead of using zip ties and tape, and it doesn't have a self-contained network environment. All of those things are flexible and a possibility for things I'll fix in version two of the mini rack, but more realistically, probably not. I know I didn't go too much into the entire software stack here, mainly because I wanted to focus on the hardware, but if this video does well, maybe I'll do a software tour of the mini rack. So yeah, I think it's great, and I stand firmly behind my build in this competition against Mr. Techno Tim, so go bother him and let him know to bring his A-game, because this thing's pretty sweet. That's all I have for you today. Everything I used is listed down in the description below. Let me know if this is something you guys are interested in or what you would do with one of these mini racks. I'd love to see what you guys have up your sleeves. If you like this video, then drop a like. If you like content like this, then make sure you're subscribed so I can do more mini stuff. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my 10 inch hardware that's definitely not mini. You guys are studs. And if you're still watching, you're an Allen Wrench. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.